Good morning, welcome to Odoo Experience. Today, we are going to unveil Odoo 15, our new version. Wait, 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 wait. Anthony, I really think it would be better if you did some warm-ups before starting. So, let's warm up together, okay? All right, we're gonna start with our right arm and take it over, ready? Right arm, yeah, right arm, left arm. Right arm, left arm. Okay, now we're gonna move the shoulders. Okay, breathe in and breathe out while you do that. Ready? Okay, and now the most important, some vocal exercises. All right, follow my lead. Ready? All right, nice. All right, ready now? Meow. Meow. Okay, that was, that was good, but meow. <laughs> meow. <laughs> okay, meow. Meow. All right, I think, I think you're ready. Go out there and kill it. Good morning. Welcome to Odoo Experience. Welcome to our partners who help us build Odoo from all over the world. Welcome to our customers who follow us year after year. And I would like to extend a special welcome to our open source contributors, developers and translators for all the work that you do. Odoo would not be the same without you. Together, we will discover all the new features we prepare for you. You will learn what's new about different industries. Retail, manufacturing, distribution, finance. But we will start by checking how we use Odoo at Odoo to manage our services activities. Here is a typical day at Odoo. Good morning, welcome to the Odoo farm. I start my morning with the Odoo mobile app. I check up notifications, activities to do, and I catch up with team on all the topics we have to discuss. So let's check what the marketing is saying. Oh, they have new designs for the website. Love it, perfect. And here in R&D, I have a task to validate to improve the contrast. Looks like it's a very good idea. So let's have a thumbs up reaction to it. Oh, and he already replied with an animated GIF. So Auto Discuss allows you to have private discussions between employees or uh, group discussions or even with customer. Let's have a look if, if my customer reacted to it. Oh, he need a new quotation as soon as possible. Let's work on it. Let's have a look to this quotation. To jump to a document super fast, you can use the new Ctrl K shortcut. Ctrl K, a few letters, and you jump to your quotations. Select the document with the arrow, and just like that, in a few seconds, you get the document you are looking for. But for this quote, I might need the help of Anthony. To contact someone in the document, same shortcut, Ctrl K, at, and you have the chat window with Anthony. Write the message. Can you review this quote now? Hmm. And if you did a mistake, use the up arrow, and you can modify your message in place. Just like that, and I send it. Okay, this looks urgent. Let's call Fabien. Hello, Anthony. Hello, Fabien. I'm, uh, I'm on your quotation and I will change the terms and conditions. Oh, good, thank you. So what I like about Odoo 15 is that we can both work on the same field and update the same content together. So it's very collaborative. So while Anthony is changing the condition, I can change the payment terms and then we are good to go. We are good like that? Yeah, it's good for me. Perfect, so we can send the quotation by email to the customer. So I click over here and I send by email. Okay, right on time. Let's open the quotation. Here are the details. Terms and conditions are as agreed. Let's accept this and sign. Yes, we got the deal. So it's time to plan the resources. I use the shortcut and I go to the planning. On the left, I see all my resources and the time allocated according to their work schedule. As I can see here, John only has 16 hours out of the 40 hours he can do this week. To assign the tasks that have been sold to him, all I have to do is to click on the small magnifier icon. I select an item and it's gonna be assigned automatically based on his work schedule. Now that my planning is good, all I have to do is to send it by email to all the developers so that they will know what to do. It's time to call the team for a kickoff meeting. Right from the project page, all I have to do is to click on this small icon and I can join the team. Hi team. Hi Fabien. 
Hello, so let me share you my screen. We'll see uh, the different uh, tasks and review the project together. So I share my screen. Okay, here are the tasks. All right, uh, would you mind showing me the Gantt chart, please? Yes, so let's have a look at the Gantt chart. We can uh, make it by uh, employees and by months. And as you can see now, in the Gantt chart, we have all the dependencies between the tasks. If one of the arrow is in orange or in red, it means that we have a conflict. In order to reschedule automatically, you can ask Odoo to compute the critical path. To do so, just click on the icon here uh, and on this arrow too, and Odoo computes the critical path using the time off of the different employees. So as you can see here, it's gray because the employee is on holiday, so we didn't schedule something to do for him at that time. All right, so before we start the project, uh, let's review together uh, the task uh, final testing that is here. So in order to do so, I'll use the new collaborative editing of Odoo and the new slash command allows you to uh, have access to a lot of formatting options like slash heading and I get a heading. You can set use cases and then slash heading uh, tests and then you can add other things like checkbox slash checkbox and I can do some yeah, checkbox. I will take care of the use cases. Oh, thank you, Anthony, if you can write the use case. And I'll continue with the test, and we can write together in the same document. So like test one, test two, and test three, while Anthony is working on the use case. Good, looks good to me. Is it good for you guys? Yeah, looking good to me, thank you. All right, let's check with the team the status of the project. So I go to the team and join the call. Hi, team. Hey, Fabien. Hello, Fabien. Hey, where are you on the project? Well, I'm very proud to say it's all finished. I'm only waiting for the customer to review, uh, to review the work, you know? Yes, perfect. So let's invite him to the call. I'll invite him in the conversation, invite, and I'll send him an email so that we can do a call in one hour. Let's join the meeting with the guys from Odoo. Hello guys, good afternoon. Hello Alan. Hello. Hello. Can't wait to see what the project is going so far. So let me share my screen so that we can do the status report together and give me a second so that I go to the project uh, here and from the project I can click on track here and do a new status report. Maybe John, if you can comment? Yeah, sure indeed. So as you can see here, uh, out of the four milestones, three are completed and uh, the only remaining one is for you to do the final approval. So do you approve it? Yes, everything is perfect. Thank so you so much. So let's do a status report to record the progress. So we all agree that it's on track? Yes, perfect. Everything is all good. Feel free to invoice the remaining milestones. Perfect. So I'll just say you're happy with it. <laughs> in the in the final uh, report and because it is okay that we invoice I go to the sale order I create an invoice and just like that you will receive an invoice Whoa, they're also very fast to issue invoice This is what I like with Odoo is the transparency Right from the invoice you can directly access to timesheets and see the detail of every hour's build I love it This is amazing it's what we call the new way of working. Let me invite Fabien on the stage to tell us more about it. Please welcome Fabien Pancars. The new way of working is about working collaboratively towards collective outcome to improve efficiency and joy at work. But it's also about management software is not anymore about management. It's about productivity tools so that your employees can do more in less time. And it's centered around human needs. You get all the features you need where you need them. You don't have a software in between you and what you have to do in your daily basis. But most important, it's blazing fast. It's snappy. It's fun to use because it's super fast. That is what we call the new way of working. There is a feature I'm very excited about in this version. It's the website builder. Oh yeah, I love it too. You know, the, the, the website builder's market is 63% market share is for WordPress because WordPress is open source, so a lot of people used it, but it's outdated. If you compare it to Shopify, WordPress is not as good as Shopify as an e-commerce. It's also uh, not as good as Squarespace or Wix for a website builder. 
So it starts to be outdated. So imagine if we can have a new website builder in e-commerce that is open source, that has all the features of Shopify, perfect e-commerce, and that has a page builder that is perfect, much better than Squarespace. This is the promise of what we deliver with Odoo 15. Okay, it sounds very interesting, but can you please show us how it works and uh, maybe do a demo? Yeah, you want to see a demo? Yeah. I love it, come. You know what's hard when you create a new website? It's to start from the blank screen. It's very hard to choose the right color and the right blocks according to your branding. So we are here for you. In Odoo 15, we developed a new artificial intelligence engine that will create your design for you in just a few clicks. Just click on this button, let's do it. So I want a business website, an online store, an e-learning platform, an event website. You choose, you answer a few questions for a university, let's say, university library. You answer a few questions, what, like what are your main objectives, get leads, develop the brand, sell more. Here it's for to develop the brand. And the system will take into account all your preference and build the perfect website for you. You can choose a pre-made color palette with color that really works well together. Or you upload your logo and we will extract the color from your logo. So I click on this palette, choose a few features like I want a news page, some events, about us and so on. And when you are ready, you click on this button, build my website. And that's where the magic happens. Boom three gorgeous designs that are ready to be used for me. So I can choose one of the three, this one, and the system will uh, build my website with my header, my footer, the right call to actions according to my business objectives. It will use my colors and photos according to my branding. And here it is, just in a few seconds, my library website is up and running. It's already online, I can already use it. And you know what, we can improve it a little bit. This, I, I really like this photo, it's a beautiful one, dynamic with uh, all the hats, but we can make it even more dynamic. So the new version comes with dynamic shape. Select a photo and you can add some shapes like rounded or square shapes like this, or you can go even more fancy with shapes having colors, and you see the colors, they perfectly match with your branding. So it's always beautiful whatever you choose. Uh, and you can pick shapes the, the way you want, and that really gives a modern feeling to your website. We also have plenty of new features, let's say for a library, maybe a donation. Uh, that's for a new university, it's good. Drag and drop a new building blocks. All the building blocks come with these perfect colors, as you can see here, and they are extremely customizable. You can do pretty much everything you want in just a few clicks. So here you could say, okay, I don't want the display option, just the donate button. Oh, I want the display option, but no pre-filled option. I have to choose the amount uh, from the slider here. Or oh, I want some options, but I want this 25 and 100. Uh, and here it is, my donation uh, widget is ready. So all I have to do is to save the page and my website is ready with a beautiful website for a university library with donations, beautiful pictures, and so on. I really love it. It's, it's so fun to build a website th that way, it's super fast. You know what, I love it so much that I think I'll build a second website just for you. So I switch to another website because Odoo is fully, fully multi-website and I'll configure it the same way. Let's do it. I want this time an online store for, let's say a car dealer uh, company. A really smart car, let's say a car dealer company. And my objective this time is to sell more. So we'll optimize the flow so that uh, we better convert the visitors into revenues. I pick a color, this one, add a few features. Do I want some store locator, appointment generation, and things like that, privacy policy. Check the option and boom. Three beautiful websites ready to use out of the box. Huh, it's difficult to choose because they are, the three are very different, but still they use the same uh, red branding that I choose. They are perfectly uh, in line with my team of a car dealer. So let's go with this one. And now the system is building all the features. In just a few seconds, I will have the perfect e-commerce website for my cars with a red branding. Here it is. So let's improve it. So hmm, maybe we can uh, improve the text. One of the features I really like in Odoo 15 is the new gradient system. So we could select some text, click on the gradient here, 
perfect. And you see how this adds up uh, to the modern feeling of the website. You know what would be good? Is to have the button with the same design. So let's do the same thing. Now you can customize buttons too with plenty of new options. So I go to the button, I'd select a style, custom style with a fill color. And let's pick a gradient like this. Hmm, that's good. I don't need a border for this one. And I'll go with a shape which is more rounded. And yeah, it's a bit too small, so I will increase the size to large. Wow, you see how beautiful it is. It's modern, it's, it, it just works, and it's just a few clicks. And you can go, and you, f you can even fine tune it. So let's say that you want to improve this gradient. Now we have a gradient configurator. So you see here, you could say, okay, I want more purple on the right, like this. Or maybe it was good like that, but I want to add a color in the middle, a red one, or maybe a white one. Yeah, white one is better. And you can customize your gradient in just a few clicks and reuse it at different places. Wow, let's continue. Our cover is perfect. Let's continue on the, on the page. So here I have a, a beautiful picture with a shape. So it, uh, the system already proposed a shape for me. I can remove it if I want or customize it because now we support multiple colors and shapes. Let's remove the shape. And you know what would be great is to see this car coming from the right. So for that, we'll use a new mechanism of animation that we support on the picture. So let's go with um, uh, which animation? Maybe a bounce in from the right? Yes, like this, bounce from the right, or uh, zoom from the right. Oh yeah, that's perfect. You see it coming, it really feels uh, like a good look and feel. You can also create animations on text. Here I could select the text, um, maybe just a word, we don't need to, put, to use a full line. Small icon here to activate animation. And I can select one like a bond scene. Perfect. And now I have animation from the car and the text coming in. I can synchronize them or say, okay, the text will be after three seconds after the car. So I just set an animation delay so that you see one and the other after. So you really have a fine control about what you want to show and how you want to do it. And you can customize pretty much everything. You see here, there is also an animation that's a background shape with an animation. It's also a new feature of Odoo 15. Um, and let's change it. Let's go with something more, um, yes, more uh, with triangles like this. And the triangles, I wanted them on the top. That's perfect. And you see it's subtle. It doesn't move and sometimes it changes. It's, it's, it's really good. Um, you can also customize any block and blocks that you now have templates. So this masonry block has different templates. You could say, okay, I prefer it that way or that way, or like this with two big picture or like this, this, like this. So you can easily uh, switch between different templates. Um, and for this one, I think I'll go with this one. So it's very easy to customize. And you have this template on pretty much all the blocks. So let's click on the header. Same thing, you have all the templates you, you, you want. So let's go with this one. Save, and I ch choose the template for this header. And the system uh, is ready. So here is my new website. As you can see, let's make it full screen. Uh, beautiful websites, gorgeous color, beautiful animations, the right choice of templates and animation, it's perfect. Let's have a look at the shop now. So I'll save my home page, and I'll go to the shop. Um, and I will start with customizing the shop. Maybe I'll add some uh, attributes and variant filters on the left, very easy, so that I can uh, filter the product easily. You can also add new things like a filter by price. So you have filter here uh, based on the price. And when you select, you have the products that change automatically. The search behavior of Odoo improved massively. Now you can search across different objects from products, blogs, e-learning content, product categories. So if I write a few words here, like boxes, is searching on the product categories and the products in this case. Perfect. And you know what? This product, the customizable task, is generating 25% of my revenue. So it's a very important product. Let's click on it and add a ribbon to it. We want to emphasize this product because it's a key one. And if you click here, I have more options to the ribbon. Let's say I want it on the right, and I can choose another color or another text if I want. 
that's perfect for my ribbon. And this product, I think we should make it bigger. It's a very important one, maybe three square. And boom, here it is. My product is uh, well uh, positioned on my page. All right, so let's have a look at it and click on the product. We redesigned all the page from the blogs to the e-learning content to the product page. All the page are beautifully designed in Odoo 15. As you can see here, you have options uh, from variants on the top with uh, upselling and extra and things like that. You have uh, attributes in the bottom and a tool to easily compare attributes between different products. Let's say you are selling mobile phone with different gigabytes or different size of the screen. You can easily have something to compare um, this. And let's customize this page even further and add some feature, maybe a call to action right here. And this call to action, I would say I offer a 30% discount for Facebook user, for Facebook users, just like that. But you know what? I want this content to only appear for some visitors on my website, the ones coming from a Facebook ad. So I'll use a new feature here, which is the visibility, and I will set it to conditionally. I'll say this banner will only appear for the visitor coming from Facebook. So the visitor coming from Facebook will see that in the page, and the other ones will see uh, this no banner. And you can target any kind of visitor, returning visitors based on the country, if you want a different phone number for different countries. So you can really create generic uh, dynamic content that adapts to your visitor. That's good. And let's go further. I want to upsell and offer some chairs with this table. And to do that, I will uh, insert something. So here I'm in a website where I can design 3D uh, objects. I copy my, cha my chair, it's a small code, and I will insert it to my website. And for that, I will start with some content. Let's say a text image here. All right, and here I will insert an embed code on the top of the picture, and I actually don't need the picture, so I remove it, and I click on edit, and I just paste the code from here, save. And now, when I save my page, I don't have the Facebook banner because I'm not coming from Facebook, but I have this new 3D so that I can see my chair in 3D, zoom into it very easy like this. Uh, and you can basically insert anything in your website very easily like that. And you choose the location, the size, and you can even make it dynamic. In this case, I put different vari variants. So I have it uh, in red or in white. Perfect. So that's my product page. It's so good that I think I have to buy the product. Let's add to cart. Beautiful animation. We now have a lot of new features when you add to cart. You can decide your own flow. Do you want to move the visitor to the cart, stay on the page so that you can choose other options, or open a pop-up with different upselling opportunities? We now also support adding some gift cards that you can sell on the e-commerce or use in the e-commerce. And these gift cards also work in the point of sale. So you can sell in one and use in the other if you want. You can also link completely the e-commerce to the point of sale. You reserve the product online and then you go on the shop to get the products and pay or do a down payment. And the best is the website builder, as it is now, is 35% faster than Odoo 14. So it's a massive improvement in speed and performance. All right, so my website is there, it's published, it's beautiful, so it's time to let the world know about it. So for that, I will use the mass mailing. I'll just go to mailing, click create a new mailing, and I'll set a title, launching or new website, like this. I select a template, maybe this one. And the mass mailing system has all the features of the website builder. So if I click on an image, you get the same uh, advanced options that I had in the uh, website builder, but for the mass mailing. So it's very easy to customize and improve in the mailing. And if it's a very important uh, mailing, I want it to be perfect. So what I can do is to launch A-B test. I just click this box and I can now create A-B testing in Odoo. So I will say that this version of this mailing will be sent to 10% of my selected mailing list. And then I will create different variations, and each variation will be sent to different subsets of recipients. And on this date, on the final date, we'll select a winner, and Odoo 
will send the winner, the best email, the best version I did, to all the other recipients. And how do I select the best? I can use this, the winner selection. I can use it on open rate, click rate, lead generated quotation, or even revenues. Can you imagine that? Revenues. So you send an email, we track the visitor on the website, it generates a sale order, it pays, uh, that generates an invoice, it pays the invoice, and we know the revenue that we generated from this mailing. And based on that, you can uh, manage your A-B testing. You select which option you want to select the winner of this mass mailing, and just click send, and that's it. Everyone will be announced, will go to your website, and you will convert that into a lot of revenues. What do you think about it, Anthony? Wow. Just wow. Yeah, I love it too. The new website builder is so fun. You can build website page in a few minutes and you get all the advantages of the e-commerce, a great website builders, and integration with the backend of Odoo. You get all the features. And it's not only about the e-commerce. You have a multi-channel sales. So you can basically integrate with Amazon, with eBay, with your CRM and all the sales channels, even the point of sale. Yeah, about point of sale, uh, now we have brick and mortar shop. They face a strong competition from online retailers. Yeah, it's not easy. They have to reinvent themselves. So nowadays, the modern point of sale, in order to survive, um, they need to do in-store services. You will get to, you want to, to do advices in your customer in the shelf. They need B2C and B2B. So they have consumers, but also have companies who purchase services, who have different prices, different taxes, and special agreements, and so on. In all, uh, they also need customer flexible customer option to ship later or to uh, configure a customized product. Um, and they also need after sales services. So you want to do some reparation, some warranties. So provide all these services for your customers so that your shop uh, and your customer will benefit from that. And that's not all. They need a full integration with the e-commerce. You place an order online, you get it on the shop, you have salespeople on the phone with CRM and so on. So you get all these features through the point of sale. Okay, it sounds too good to be true. So can you show us what it looks like? I'd love to. Whether you work on a tablet, a professional point of sale, on your mobile or through the laptop, the new point of sale has all the features working directly from the front end. Your cashier never have to go to the back end. So let's start with opening a new session. It's very easy. I can set the initial cash, 260 euro. I have a small note, very useful, that will be reminded to me when I close the session later on. So I can start a new session easily. And one of the things I really like about the new point of sale is that you can do service in store. So you can meet your customer and provide some advice is very easy. So let's authentify myself. I have all the product that I can browse so that I can, I can give good advice to my customer. And if you need a product, I can just click on this small icon I here and I get more information. And as you can see, this product is available in two ma three materials, aluminum, steel and custom, or in two colors, white and black. And if I pick one of the materials, like aluminum, the system automatically filters the two products that are available. Let's say the customer wants six of it. So because he wants six, it's a good customer, I will give him a price list, B2B price list. So the price decreased automatically. And if he wants this, I have to check in my inventory if I have enough stock to deliver the customer. And as you can see, in San Francisco, I have 55 units. Great, I can close the deal. But in New York, I have only five units. Fortunately, Odoo is smart enough to take from the right uh, whereas if needed. So I can close this and I'll select this product, which is good for my customer. I can choose different other products. Let's say one also this one. And that's a product configurator right in your shop. So you can provide advice and say you prefer this or that and you have extra price. So you can really configure your product like this. You can also add a new discount just because I can. It's a new feature of Odoo 15. So let's say you want five uh, euro discount and authentify the customer. Let's say it's this one. Very useful if you want to deliver after. And what's, what I love about it is that it just works out of the box. It's connected directly to the printer, the cash drawer, and the payment terminal. No IoT box required. It just works out of the box. So I can close my session here without having to do anything, no wires, nothing. It's very easy. So let's make register a payment like this. As you can see, it's 
48 cents. In some countries, like in Belgium or in Switzerland, if you pay by cash, you have to round by 5 cents. So if I click on pay by cash, and you see it's rounded at 50 cents. It's perfect uh, for, for what I need. And I'll click on ship letter. That means that instead of giving the products directly to the customer, I'll have a delivery order from San Francisco that will ship the products later on to the customer. Perfect, I can close the deal even if I have, don't have the product uh, in store. Okay, let's say he pay by cash, so I click validate and the cash drawer opens and the ticket uh, uh, opens. That's perfect. Oh, but let's say I don't have enough coins or change to give back to the customer, my, my, my cash drawer is empty. No worries, in the new version you have a cash in a cash out feature just like that, I can say I will put some euro from my pocket, from FP, that I put a uh, cash in, uh, in the pocket, so I can put money here, like this, and I have a ticket as a proof that I put money from my pocket in the cash uh, register. That's perfect. Odoo is always there to save you if you have an issue. That was a good flow for a consumer, but we also support uh, working with companies. And these flows are very different. Traditional point of sale software don't support the need of companies. We do. Let's say a new customer is coming in. First thing you do, you click and you can authenticate him. As you can see here, I have his credit, 60,000 euro. So this company forget to pay a few invoices. That, that's not good. So let's select the customer. What I can do is I click on and have a look at the past order. Uh, and I can filter by customer. And I see all the different orders from this customer or order. And I can easily reprint the receipt or reprint the invoice. That's perfect, so you can justify the fact that he owns us uh, some money. Or I can also ask him to pay on receivable. Before buying, I'd like you to pay uh, 5,000 euro because you own us too much money. If you want to place a new order, please uh, pay your debt first. So let's go to the payment. Let's say 5,000 euro. He won't pay in cash. He'll pay uh, in a bank statement. And here, it's directly integrated with the payment terminal. So as you can see, I just have to pass my card like this, and my bank payment is done automatically. I have the ticket, uh, and I have nothing else to do. If I want, I can have a copy for the merchant. And just like that, uh, it's, it's paid. Perfect, we have seen how we can uh, do some deal with a B2B customer. Let's go further. Now that he pays his debt, I'm uh, willing to sell him more uh, products. Let's say he's interested in a laptop. So I search on laptop and I see that I have one here. Perfect, 4,000 euro for this laptop. I can click here and I see my price, my forecast, and I see here I have no product available, nothing. But I want to close the deal. I don't want the customer to go to the next store and get a product from another competitor. I want to close the deal right now. So what can I do? Fortunately with Odoo, that's the killing feature of Odoo. It's now fully integrated with the back end uh, of Odoo. So what you can do is to place an order. So if I switch to the back end, I can create a quotation for this customer and I will place an order for a product that they will buy later on to my supplier. So I do that. I uh, select my product, just like that. And now I have a quotation. I can send the quotation by email and you will be able to confirm it later on or I can uh, confirm it right now and ask him to pay a down payment to confirm that he's ready to place an order for this product that he will receive later on. Let's do that. So I confirm and the magic of Odoo happens here. Uh, what I will do instead of selling a product because I won't sell him a product, I just placed an order and I want down payment from the customer. I'll click here. I can select the last order from this customer and I will settle a down payment like this, 20% of the order, which is 800 euro. And that's a down payment that will automatically confirm the sale order um, so that uh, the customer can validate uh, his uh, order. So let's pay that, he will pay, let's say, in cash. And I just uh, validate like this. My cash drawer opens and my ticket prints automatically. So easy to do. All right, so now we place an order. And because of the magic of Odoo, all the products have automatically been purchased to my supplier, automated replenishment rules. 
So a few days later, uh, the, the, I will receive the product from the vendor. Delivery for you. Thank you. You're welcome. So when you receive, in the point of sale, you can connect to the barcode scanning system. Thank you. So all I have to do is to scan the different products. So I will register a receipt like this. But you see here, I have a problem. I have uh, a lot of different receipts that are uh, pending from different vendors. So I don't know which one I have to select. I don't know which, which one I just received. So what I can do, it's very easy. I just scan one of the products like this, and the system automatically filter the receipt uh, that uh, contains this product. So let's just select this one and we'll receive the different product. And here, something magic happened too. I have different orders from this supplier. Because you know, when you are a shop, every day you buy a new product and the supplier delivers the product as soon as they get available. So it proposed me to automatically create a batch. So I have a batch here with two different orders, one color per order. And I can scan all the products directly like this. Like this. And I can uh, register products from three uh, three different products from two different orders easily. And when I click on validate here, I get automatically the reception report. And as you can see in the reception report, I see that my laptop is reserved for Deco Addict. So all I can do is to say, okay, an assign. It prints automatically a label that I can put on the screen. So because it's reserved, I won't put this laptop in the shelf. I will put it here for my reserved for my customer. And the two orders, which are not assigned to customer, I can leave it there. On top of that, I can print the labels, the product labels. And these are the new labels. We uh, print a lot of different labels in the new point of sale. As you can see here, we have a lot of different templates uh, that are printed automatically. So you'd see it's very easy. Connection with the sale order, your point of sale is connected to the replenishment mechanism, to the barcode scanner. So it does all the thing you need. And when I received the product, the customer received also automatically an SMS telling him that he can uh, come at the shop to get his own product. Hello. So you want your product? Indeed, yeah. Um, so here it is. So the, what I will do is I will load the order and I will settle the order. So we'll have to pay 4,000 euro minus 800 euro. Thank you. And let's say one extra product because Let's do upselling because we can. So you can do extra product. Oh, and you have a coupon. Indeed, yeah. So uh, the new Odoo version allows to uh, have coupon that works both on your e-commerce and uh, on your point of sale. So just click on enter code. I can scan the coupon like this. Okay. And you automatically have a discount of 10%. That's perfect. So let's say you pay by cash like this. You pay. And we are good. Thank you. Thank you. Very, very easy to do. But we can go further. We can also manage the after sale services. Uh, and that's the future. You know, there are a lot of shops who can do more business by selling maintenance or repair service or warranties or subscription to different services. And you can deliver all of these through uh, your point of sale system because it's fully integrated to the backend, you benefit from the other apps like subscription, rental, or uh, repair services. So let's see now that the customer, a few months later, comes back because he has an issue with his product. It's broken. It's broken. Yeah. I don't know ah, let's, let, let, let me do a quote for, for the customer. So I go to the backend and I create a new quotation to repair this product. So I select the customer. I select the product, repair service, like this. And I will charge 100 euro per hour. And I confirm like that. Of course, I want him to, to pay a down payment. So I click here, pick the order, uh, not settle, down payment. So let's do it again, click, pick the order, down payment, 50%. And now I have a down payment of 50 euro. We can pay this by cash. And we have a down payment for the product he will repair. So now let's go to see the technician so that we will repair this product. So let's repair some material. The technician uh, can work on the tablet. So I go to the repair service project. 
I click on it and I have all the tasks I have to do. Let's pick the tasks from my cell order with the laptop to fix. I have everything to do here. I can start the timer. And I have a counter that tells me where I am. So I open the laptop like this. Can start working on it. Maybe I should replace some parts. So I click here and I will add some parts that will be charged to the customer. So like one of these and one of these, maybe a new memory and a new CPU. Come back to my task. And that's perfect. I'm good, so I stop it. Um, 15 minutes, let's, for the sake of the demo, uh, let's put two hours, like this. Save, and I can uh, close my task, go back to the next one, and bring it back to my shop. Perfect, now I have the product, it's fixed. For the customer, the customer automatically received an email when, we, when the technician closed the task. So let's say the customer comes back to uh, retrieve his order. So when he comes back, we click on this. You select the order of the customer and I will now settle the order for the customer. And as you can see here, I have 200 euro, two hours of service, a few products that we have added during the repair, minus the down payment of 50 euro that the customer already paid. Very easy, all the features are there. Super, super simple. So let's pay that. I will pay in cash and I will uh, validate this so that I give, and I can even send the ticket by email to the customer. Perfect. What a good day. We sold services, we sold products, we shipped things from San Francisco, we checked the inventory, we didn't lose a deal because we didn't have the product, we could uh, make orders and things like that. Now it's time to close the day, and in order to do that, I will click on the small icon that you see on the top right that prints a summary of all the sales and payment that we have had today. Here it is. Perfect. What do you think about it, Anthony? That's a, that's a game changer for retailers. They will be able to offer better services, spend more time with their customer, and they have opportunity to grow their business. Exactly. And if they have multiple stores, we even have a warehouse management system for them to operate. The new version of Odoo, Odoo 15, has been designed around seven principles for best warehouse operation. First, we want the minimal number of touches of the goods. So from the receipt to delivery, we want to optimize the number of touches. If you have a fully automated warehouse, it could be zero. But in reality, the majority of the warehouse management system run around seven or eight touches. With Odoo 15, we think we decreased it to three or four touches uh, for each good. Second, we designed our order one-way flow. We have tools so that you can design from the picking, the replenishment of, and the receipt of the good one way in your warehouse so that it's easy to organize the warehouse and you minimize the distance traveled by the people. Third, we want the stock in the right place. If you, if you minimize error, if you uh, optimize where you store the goods to reduce the travel distance, if you uh, organize better your warehouse, you can save up to 20 to 30% of the time to operate your warehouse. Next, we want the right amount of stock. So we want to be easily to, we want, don't want too much, not too few. It's easy to replenish. You really have the right amount of stock in the right packaging method. Next, we design so that you optimize labor. The barcode scanner is super fast. You have uh, tasks for every operator so they know exactly what to do. We reduce the number of, we also reduce the travel distance they have to do. We also work so that all the operations they have to do, like inventory or picking, packing, shipping, everything is built in for them to proceed very fast. Next, we want to minimize errors. If we minimize errors, we'll have less issues with replenishment. Everything is going to be better. So we have control system, benchmarking, and tools so that they have to record less, or tools so that we can control where you have issues. And last but not least, our system is fast and reliable. Um, it can even work if you lose the internet connection, which is very important in the warehouse because your Wi-Fi doesn't work everywhere in the warehouse. So we designed something that runs uh, everywhere. Sounds very cool. I want to see it in action, but not in a studio, fake studio like this. I would like to see it in a real warehouse. Yes, we did, we did a video in one of our uh, customers a few days ago. Let's have a look at it. 
Welcome to Axedis, a very happy user. We'll see how Odoo 15 will help them organize their errors for efficiency to minimize the number of touches and reduce errors. And we'll start our journey with purchasing product. We'll see the purchase order, receiving the product and storing them to the right location. You ready? Let's go. Once you purchase the product, the truck comes a few days later and brings the products to you. We unload the products in the dock. Then, the dock coordinator scans the product receipt. He can build pallets and boxes together. All he has to do to identify the right receipt is to scan one of the products, just like that, and Odoo filters to the right receipt. When I select the receipt, he's proposing me to batch all the receipts from the same vendor. That way, I will be able to scan multiple orders in one shot, very easy. Then I can scan my products. I scan a product, and when I have uh, more units, I can say I will scan a box of 40 or a pallet or 84. You scan it or you do it on the screen. And I confirmed. Then, once you have scanned all the product, you can place a license plate number, which is a, in this case an SSCC number, an identification of the pallet. You place this number on the pallet and now it's identified with all this content. All I have to do is to scan it. If you use QR code, it's even easier. With GS1 code, you have all the information you need, the product, the quantity, the packaging, the serial numbers if you use them, in the QR code. So it's very easy. You scan the QR code and Odoo sets all the data for you. All you have to do after is to identify the palette. If you want to place a palette number on it, like this, you scan it and you are good to go you can identify and store this palette in the warehouse. Perfect, right in time. Now, the material handler will store the palette to the right location. All he has to do is to scan the palette number and Odoo will tell him where to store it in which location. It's based on put-away strategies that you can define based on the capacity of your bin, the type of packaging, or custom strategies like a triadic warehouse with slow, medium, and fast-paced products. Now that the products are stored, Patrick, the inventory manager, can launch cycle count. He can do it manually based on rules, that's what he's doing right now, or he can automate it with rules that he sets on the location. And once they set these inventory rules, the people will start the task. Based on the cycle count request, the worker can do his inventory adjustment. In this case, I have to check this product. I have three products in the system, but I see I have four. So what I can do is scan the four products just like that. So I have one extra. And I can validate my inventory adjustment so that the inventory level will be fixed. But maybe if I have four here, it's because there is one somewhere else in another location. In order to get the inventory level of any product everywhere in your rows, just scan it, just like that, and you see everywhere this product is located. And we see here that in another shelf, in another row, we have one of these products. And so I can fix this quantity too. Let's see now how to organize the customer flow from picking to packing to shipping. So we're back with Patrick, the inventory manager, and he will show us how we use the new reservation method in order to decide what should be done today. So we have three methods. One is as soon as possible, which was the only method available in Odoo 14, or he can do manually so that he controls when he wants to trigger what, or he can use X days before scheduled day to automate the process. So for example, we have FedEx coming in on Monday. So Monday morning, it triggers manually all the reservations so that we know we have to do that this day. Now that we reserved all the products to be done today, the inventory manager will decide who will do it and in which batch. For this, he has different picking strategies, batch picking, wave picking, or cluster picking. You can automate all these strategies or he can do it manually to have a fine tuning of what he wants to do. He is currently creating a wave transfer and assigning a responsible so that he will give a task to the worker. That is very efficient to automate your flow in the warehouse. To speed up the inventory process, workers do cluster picking. 
They can pick multiple order at once, storing one order per box so that they are ready to pack very easily and fast. So I choose one of the batch, the batch one, and it's telling me what to do. First, I need two of these. So I scan the product and then I move it to one box. I scan the box so that it knows for which order it is allocated. Then I check and I need four of these. One, two, three, four. And I move the box in the same box because it's for the same order. So I put the four products right there, just like that. And I scan this box so that it knows that I put it for this order. Now I check and I need to do this one. And I need three of it. But this time it's for another order. So I move them in the right box and I scan the package. Once it's done, I validate the order and we are good to go. We, all we need to do now is to pack these products. As the products are ready, the worker can pack the products and Odoo automatically print the shipping label. He can stick the shipping label on the box and we are good to go. The customer will receive his product in a few days. Very cool, those features are really great to move product around. But now let's check how we can manufacture those goods. Yeah, I love manufacturing because it's so complex to make it right. Traditional manufacturing software, they are designed to run in perfect environment. They expect your planning to be always accurate, your inventory level to be right, your bill of materials, your routing to be correct. They expect you to manufacture everything in series. But the reality is different. In reality, your workers get sick, you have to, to change your planning right away, you don't need to wait for the scheduler to run over the night and wait for the next day. In reality, your bill of materials and routing are not perfect, you do engineering to order, uh, and you cannot do everything in series. So it has to be way more flexible than traditional manufacturing software. So the new version of Odoo is designed around a series of principles. The first one is, it has to be automated. The system should provide guidelines for the workers, yet it has to be very flexible. You should have the control over your system. You should be able to change everything, to add products in the middle of an operation, to revert operations if you did a mistake. It has to be flexible. So a mix of both is really giving the control to the end users. In a good manufacturing system, you need to implement Kaizen, continuous improvement, but continuous improvement when you work in chaotic environment is not easy. It's not like you just have to analyze the load on the work centers. You, you need to have feedback loop from the shop floor to, the, to your MRP software, lots of different things. And we need a system that allows you to create a flow. Uh, most uh, small to mid-sized companies uh, are designed to uh, develop products one by one, but they also want to create a flow where they create uh, the manufacture the product in line. In short, we need to handle the complexity simply. It's very easy to say, but it's very hard to do. And uh, the way we achieve that is by combining MRP plus manufacturing execution system, PLM, quality maintenance, everything purchased in the same platform. That makes everything much, much easier. And that allows the data to, to flow seamlessly from one application to another, for you to react very quickly across all the departments, for the information to go from one department to another, and your users to act based on that. And last but not least, a lot of companies nowadays implement engineering to order, customizable product. They adapt the product from uh, the customer demand. So you need flexibility on how you load parts and change your bill of materials, you customize products right away in the system very easily. And that's what Odoo 15 is all about. Let's have a look at our video about it. Good morning. Mm. So today we're going to see how we can uh, use the manufacturing application in complex environment and we'll start in the field with after sales services. We create a project with all the things to do, tasks, timesheets, bill of material, manufacturing order in the same project. Let's start the day by visiting the customer. And I start the day with the field service app. Like this, I can easily swipe and check what I have to, say, to do tomorrow or today. And as you can see, some tasks are just for me and other tasks are for me or 
uh, another colleague, John, uh, because he is an expert and I did him on the field. And in order to plan my day, I like to start with the map view. So I click on map and I get a map view of all the customers I should visit today. And let's start with the first one here in California and navigate to this customer. Hey. All right, so let's have a look at what we have here. There are a bunch of switches and servers to repair. So let's start the timer in the application. That way I have the time that we spend working on it so that my profitability report will be good for this project. And I have the timer run here. And ah, there are a lot of things to do. So let's call a technician right like that. From the application, I can call anyone. And I will call Anthony so that he will help me uh, have a quote. Hi, Anthony. Hi, Fabien. Hi, how are you? Uh, can you make a quote for the customer Azure uh, for a rack of servers? OK, uh, Azure for a rack of servers. Can you show me what it looks like there? So I just turned the camera. And as you can see here, you have all the servers on the camera. We probably have to replace everything. OK, I will add one extra day to set up the switches. Perfect. Okay. You want me to send the quotation now? Yes, can you send it to the customer? Okay. Yeah, it's sent already. Thank you, I'll inform the customer. Now that the project is sold, the engineer can go to the project management of Odoo and start working on the project. So you just click on the project and you get all the projects running. You have a Kanban view of all the projects, so it's very easy to follow up what's going on and what are the different states of the different projects. Let's jump on the sale order 35, which has been automatically created when the customer validated his order. So I have all my tasks that are here, so it's very to drag and drop and organize the task. And if you want to schedule all the time for all the different workers, just jump to the Kanban view as it is. The system scheduled the task automatically for me, as it is here, based on a critical path. But if I want to reschedule, I go to a, different, uh, to a relationship and I click on the arrow here and say schedule the, the, at the earliest possible. And you see, move the task for me automatically. I can create new relationship very easily just by getting the handler which is here and drag and drop it to the task here. Perfect. Now my planning is good, so let's start working on the project. So I go to the project and I start working on the task. It's very easy, you can record timesheet. And when it's done, you can attach the document uh, very easily. Just drag and drop the file to Odoo and it's attached to the task so that you get all the information you need on the project. You will have the tasks, the time you spend, the different plans, but also the bill of materials and the manufacturing order. Let's have a look at the bill of materials. To switch to another screen, you can use the shortcut Ctrl K and write something like bill of materials and in just a few clicks like that, you get all the bill of materials. And let's start with this one, the rack of servers. I'll duplicate it because I've made something custom for this customer. So I'll duplicate and I put a reference so that it's linked to my sale order. Perfect. And I will use four switches. That's exactly what I need. But in the operation, I will use other operations. You can reuse different operations uh, very easily, clicking here, and you can pick operations that you pre-configured based on different activities. So let's add a testing phase to my manufacturing order and though it's imported in my bill of material. Now that it's done, let's create a new manufacturing order. So you go to the search for manufacturing order and I jump to the new menu just like that. I create a new manufacturing order for rack of servers. And this manufacturing order will be dedicated to the sale order 35. And by creating the link here, you will have the cost in your project of the service, the time spent, on the tasks, but also the components that you used in the manufacturing order. Everything will be linked to the same project. And as you can see here, the four switches are red. That means I don't have all the switches on, uh, in my inventory. That's okay, we can continue. Uh, and you see, I have only three switches available. So uh, let's add a new line. We'll do something different because in Odoo, even if it's configured, you can always change everything. So let's add uh, two U racks. When I will save, it's automatically expanded to the different components of this kit. Let's have a look at these three uh, switches because one is missing. So let's click on the icon and I have the details here. I have three switches available in my stock. Perfect, it's already reserved to my order. But one which is not available. Fortunately, Odoo replenished everything automatically for me. As you can see here, the purchase order 12 
is in request for quotation, ready to be sent to the suppliers to buy the missing switch. So that I will get four at the end. I click on the purchase order, I put it in priority and confirm it so that I get all uh, the materials I need easily. If I go back to my manufacturing order, you see here that now it's not red anymore because I purchased the goods, so I have everything needed, it's not just not there. And in my list, the material availability is waiting. It's computing automatically all the availabilities of all the materials so that I see in my manufacturing order list which ones are ready to produce and which ones are waiting. And if it's waiting, I click on it and I get the details of all the components. Now that we have all the goods and the design of the plants have been made, we can manufacture our product. For that, we'll use the manufacturing execution system of Odoo. Everything runs on this tablet, which is directly connected to Odoo, and this tablet integrates to all the components I need for the manufacturing quality check and printing labels, setting up the machine, and so on. It's connected through the IoT box, who now support the OPC UA new protocol. So let's go. Everything is on the tablet, so it's very easy. As the, for the worker, it just has to follow the instruction. So I click on the first step and I have the worksheet. So I have all the instruction I need to do right in front of me, so it's very easy. So it's telling me to open the switch like this, asking me to do a quality uh, check, a visual quality check with a camera. So all I have to do is take the camera, press here, and it's gonna take a picture, which is here, for my quality check. Perfect, very easy. Then I have to go to the next step, and I want to do it hand-free. I don't want to click everywhere, so you can control all the operations from your foot. Just click on the foot switch here, and it goes to the next step. Now it's telling me to enter uh, some of the things, so I'll just remove and unplug this, and check that, okay? And I go to the next step. So let's replace that at the right position. Perfect, and I can click to go to the next step. So you see, it's very easy and free. I can do all the operation. I just have to follow the step. That is interesting. That is a quality check that the quality team decided to add at this operation. Because we had issues in the past with the quality of our product, the quality team decided to add exactly at this operation a check for the worker. So it's telling me here, should I do this? Does it pass or does it fail? I can say, okay, it pass. I could have done it with the foot if I want. Now I have another quality check. I have to measure the thing, so I can just do this, measure the quality, and you see the number change because it's directly connected to uh, my caliper here. So it's very easy, I measure it, and when it's okay, I can just validate it, just like that. Next instruction is asking me to replug everything, and that's it. I can click next, and it switch to the next instruction. I should uh, close it, and I can close it like that and switch to the next instruction. Now he's asking me to uh, scan the barcode number, just like this, uh, perfect, and uh, print a label. To print a label, all I have to do is to right click with my foot and it will launch automatically the print of my label. So very easy, all I have to know is to stick it on my product, like that. I can close it and go to the next step with my foot, very easy. He's checking, he's asking me to rescrew everything. Perfect, I did it, I can switch to the next step. And just like that, I did all my steps. So it's very easy, you have something to control all the steps for your workers, they don't have to think, they just follow. You have integrated worksheet, you have all the quality check, you have the printers that are scanned. And if you have any issues, you can always click here and you have all the features like launching a quality alert, a maintenance request, scrapping product. So you have a very good feedback loop so that you can improve the process with the feedback of your worker in the shop floor. What a day. We started in the field by doing maintenance services. Came back home, purchased several design plans, and then we manufactured the product. Now it's time to do a wrap up. Let's have a look at our project management system and see what Odoo can do for that. So when I go to the project, I have a new icon here on the top left, which has the status of the project. For now, it's on track. And if I click on it, I have the history of the evolution of this static. On track, at risk, off track. So you always know where your, stat your project is. And you have the progress, uh, which is here. On the right, all the KPIs. You have task, 
manufacturing orders, work orders, purchase orders, all the time spent, profitability report, gross margin, everything's there so that you have statistics about everything in your project. And if you click, you get drilled down to that. So I can go to the burn down chart and I see the evolution of the tasks. Or I can go to the profitability report or the billable time and have a split of the time we spend by different activities. Or maybe I want it as a graph. So I just switch and I get it as a graph. Or maybe I want it by task or and by task and by employee. But I want to exclude these two employees. So you have all the data you need, very easy, and, and just a click. Just like that, we used to have a great project management in Adobe and a great manufacturing software. Now you have both together so that you have engineering to order or maintenance or repair or complex project where we mix time, tasks, work centers, manufacturing orders and everything. So you get data about all your activities in one single place. This is really a game changer for manufacturing companies. And now I have a very special guest, Wayneant, our expert in accounting. Hi, Anthony. And Wayneant, I have a gift for you. Now I'm getting scared. This is all the paper invoice we received this morning. That many paper invoices. Do we still receive all of them? Yeah. So can you, can you help me to get rid of this and to become a fully paperless company? Yeah, absolutely. Let's start digitalizing them. So first of all, let's get rid of all those paper bills. And therefore, you need something magical like this. You can just scan with your intelligent scanner all the different pages in order to create one PDF file. Because Udo is interacting with email gateway. So if you have an intelligent scanner like this one, you can just scan it and send it to the predefined email address. And once you're done, take the paper and get rid of it. So let's have a look how we can manage it in Udo. First of all, open the document application. The scanned file is right over here. So first of all, we're going to split it. Click on the split button in order to see all the different pages. You can have single and individual pages. So if you want to merge different pages together, just click on the split in order to merge those ones together. And all the attachments you don't want to track in Udo, just deselect them so that we can get rid of those as well. So once you're done, move it to the finance folder. And all the attachments, well, let's discard them and get rid of it. So let's have a look at the finance folder. You see all your different bills over here. You can use the tags in order to filter exactly the documents that you want to have on the screen. So we're gonna use the inbox in order to see all the bills that have not been processed yet. And from here on, you can select one or multiple bills together in order to send immediately to the accounting application. So use the action buttons on the right side in order to create some bills. So we created two PDF files, which means two bills, and we're gonna attach the, um, the image immediately to the, to the vendor bill itself. So before we're gonna handle those, I have some very interesting news because if we go back to the document application, you can also filter on the invoices. People that cannot use Udo for their invoicing application, well, they're gonna love the fact that you can now also import um, all their customer invoices and send those to accounting as well. Because while sending them to accounting, we also process them through our OCR. So I'm very happy to announce that we have OCR also for customer invoices right now, so that you don't have to process all of them manually anymore. So let's have a look at the accounting application. If we open it, well, we can see our two bills to validate over here and the five customers invoices over there. We're going to start with the bills. Open the bills to validate and open the first one. Well, because this is currently um, processing by the OCR, well, we refresh it every five minutes. If you don't want to wait that long, just click on the refresh button and all the documents that are managed by the OCR for the moment will be refreshed. And you can immediately see the magic of the OCR. The recognition of our OCR is just amazing. We capture all the relevant information, like the supplier, but also the bill reference, the bill date and the due date. And what about the invoice lines? Well. You might imagine that I have some great news over here because you might have seen that we also scan products now. Well, indeed, it's because the OCR will also take care of matching all your purchase orders with your vendor bills right now so that you don't have to do that manually anymore. And it's not an OCR, but it's actually an inheritance of all the different purchase order lines linked to that bill. So let's have a look at the second one. Because for this bill, well, there is no purchase order available. So therefore, we're going to reduce, we're going to actually create one invoice line for every um, single tax line. 
What is not possible to scan by the OCR is to provide you with the correct expense account combined with the correct tax code, because it's simply not on the image. And that's where the artificial intelligence comes in place. Because um, based upon historical data, actually, Udo will propose you with the correct expense account combined with the correct tax code. You might have seen that we have some car expenses here. Do you know that you can link your cars to your vendor bills as well? If you use the fleet application, you can add the column of the vehicle and link the bill to the correct vehicle. We're going to see what is the advantage of that just in a second. Now that you're done, actually, in Without any manual intervention, the OCR has taken over all the relevant information, so you, as an accountant, you can just select all of them and post the entries in a single click. So what about those cars? If you want to manage the difference between your bookkeeping result and your fiscal result, well, you can use our differ disallowed sorry, expense um, report. If you open it, you will see all the different um, disallowed expense categories that you can create. But for cars, there is something specific, because every single car can have a different percentage. We're going to unfold these, and you can see that for the car expenses, we take track, we keep track of every single car, with all of them another percentage of the deductibility. So you can handle all of them on a single expense account, and we're going to keep track of the correct rate. So let's go back to our accounting, and let's have a look at the invoices. Because I refreshed uh, the vendor bills, well, I refreshed all the customer invoices as well. And as I mentioned before, you can see that the OCR is also applicable now for all your customer invoices. And because we want to make sure that um, we are aligned between your legacy uh, application and Udo, we're going to make sure that the sequence is exactly the same as in Udo, as you can see right over here. Actually, the biggest challenge, I think, in order to keep and to manage a smooth invoicing process is to make sure that you apply correct taxes on all your customer invoices for all your customers around the world. So let's see what's new there. If we have a look at our invoices, well, let's say that we group them by sales team, for example. We have the one from the website where different B2C customers purchase something. Well, depending on the country, this one is in Germany, you can see that we will apply immediately the correct OSS rate for Germany. And if we take others, like for Italy or for France, we will always apply the correct VAT rate. Actually, it's that easy to activate it in one single click. We will create all the tax codes for you and make sure that we will apply them for the correct customer. So what about customers that have multiple VAT numbers? Well, let's have a look at our B2B sales. I have I made a sale here to Oktoberfest, for example. This is a customer in Germany. Well, we're going to apply VAT rates for Germany, and we're also going to print your VAT tax number on the invoice. So that's one for Germany, but I also have a VAT number in France. So let's have a look at this customer invoice for Patissé. We're going to use the correct tax rate for France here and print your French VAT number. It's amazing because now you can manage different tax numbers for a single legal entity. So what about bank transactions? You already know that we synchronize different banks. Well, I'm happy to announce that we also added a new provider so that now we can um, add more than 25,000 banks worldwide and synchronize them with Udo. So once we have the bank transactions in Udo, we need to reconcile them. And if you have a lot of bank transactions, it can be a real mess. Well, we have some great updates for the reconciliation models in order to automate that as much as possible. So I have 20 bank transactions here. Let's see how we can reconcile them. If you click on it, well, in a single click, you can see immediately on the top that I reconciled 17 statement lines. Because in your reconciliation models, you can make sure that only the ones that matches perfectly with the amount and with your reference are completely automated. And all the ones that we're not sure, that have a partial payment, for example, like this one from Jerome and another one from Cheesecake, well, there you need to validate manually in order to make sure that those are not processed automatically. And for customers that you granted a discount, you can label them in order to make sure that we apply a write-off amount only for those that you granted a discount. So in a few clicks, I reconciled all those 20 bank transactions. So now that we talked about that, let's talk about the closing process. The closing process can be very complicated in order to make sure that the closing is done in time. So let's have a look first at your VAT returns. Because I already explained to you before that we can handle now multiple VAT numbers to a single legal entity. If you open the VAT return, you can now select all of them at once. So the one for OSS, you can just click on OSS and we will provide you with the one for all your OSS sales, based upon the different companies that you sold to.
And if you have multiple VAT numbers, you can now export immediately the correct tax declaration for all of them, like the one for France. Or if you have one in Germany as well, you can simply click and export them very easily in a, in a single legal entity. And what about following up on the balance sheet? Well, you already know the closing entry, but we provide you now with a specific closing entry for all of them differently so that you can follow them up on different accounts on your balance sheet. But closing is of course not all about taxes. The purpose of a closing is to make sure that the right expenses and the right revenue is processed in the right period. So you already knew that we can easily create provisions, like for example for purchases that came in late. If we filter, for example, on, let's say, 2021, and if we want to make sure that we need to track expenses that came in late, like, for example, the one from December 2020, well, if we filter on it, we will see different vendor bills that needed to be provisioned in previous year. Well, by simply selecting all of them, you can go to your action button and create an automatic entry. You can change the period. So fill in simply your recognition date, like the 31st of December in my case, and select your accrued account. Of course, it's different in every country. Belgium is this one. And select your journal. And from here on, you can change the amount. Or you could, for example, change the percentage. And it will immediately adapt, and you will see the impact in the accounting right on. But let's keep 100%. What's going to happen now is that we're going to create all the necessary accounting entries. On the 31st of December, we will make one big accrual and we will reverse them exactly on the date of the bills to be sure that all the expenses are recognized on the right date. So let's click, let's click on it, sorry, and we're going to create all the entries for you. So in a single click, we made the provision. But what about the provisions that you can not have already in Udo? What about bills that did not come in? You cannot decide when your supplier will send them. Well, I'm very excited about this new feature because if you use the purchase orders, you could, for example, go to all the purchase orders that are waiting for bills. And in a single click, you can select all of them as well and create an accrued expense. We, make, um, we take into consideration your invoicing policy, but also the right periods. So all the receipts that you had in September that are not built yet, in a single click, you can create a provision for it. So also here, select your provision account, for example, invoices to be received, and select the date. I do it here in the future, but we keep track of it in the past as well, so you can create them later for all previous months as well. So create the entry, we're going to create the provision for you, and we make the reverse on the next, um, on the next day. So what about timesheets, or what about sales? As consultants, we timesheet a lot, but we don't invoice them always in the same month. So the same is applicable for sale orders. If we go to our sale orders to be invoiced, for example, we might have timesheet a lot during the month, but not invoicing it yet because we want to invoice it at the end of the, of the project. But the revenue must be recognized in time. So also here, just go to the action button and create an accrual for revenue. It's the same way as it works for purchase invoices. I'm pretty sure that all accountants are going to love this new feature because it will spare a lot of your precious time. So now that we had the closing, well, of course, after a closing, you need a beautiful reporting. And that's why we have Udo Spreadsheet. So let's create the spreadsheets together and see what's new over there. I'm going to start by one for my invoicing analysis, for example. Let's create one by customer and follow it up, for example, by product. In a few clicks, you can obtain exactly the information you want on the screen. But if you need to add some additional information, you can insert it in a spreadsheet. And that spreadsheet, you can completely adapt it yourself. So for example, if you want a column for budget, let's say that I want to add the budget over here, well, I can fill in the budget for every customer. Now, I don't have all the information in front of me, so I think I need some help here. So I'm going to call Kelly. I hope she's available and that she can help me with the budget. So let's just call her immediately from Udo and see if she's available. Hey, Kelly, great to have you here. Hello, how are you today? Fine, fine. Actually, I need your help uh, over here because um, I'm creating a beautiful spreadsheet based upon um, our different sales for our customers, but I don't have the budget in front of me. Would you be able to help us here and to fill in the budget for me? Sure, we'll do. Thank you so much, Kelly. In the meantime, well, let's create a chart and see how easy that is. Just select the totals that you want and insert a different chart. You can choose different types, the bar, the line. I'm going to keep the bar and select the categories um, that you want to use. So for example, I'm going to use the products and confirm it. 
in a few clicks, well, you created a beautiful chart. And you might imagine already what I want to say because you can see it in front of you. Our spreadsheets are now completely collaborative. All your different users can collaborate together in a single spreadsheet and it's updated in real time. So while Kelly is busy, let's see if we can make our reporting even easier and add some filters. So for example, if I want to filter you on the country, just click and create a filter for the country, for example, and select your related model. So let's choose for the country and save. Well, as from here on in the filters, you can immediately filter, for example, all the sales for Belgium. And your report will immediately adapt. But not only the report, also the different charts will immediately adapt based upon the filters that you apply. So go for Italy as well, for example, and it will immediately adapt. I can see you're done there, Kelly. Uh, thank you so much for your help. Really appreciate it. Nothing that a nice Christmas gift won't pay off. Yeah, no, I thought I'm so already. Anytime. I will bring you some chocolates. <laughs> Sounds good. See you later, Kelly. Bye-bye. So what is great about spreadsheet as well is that you can now add any different list view in a single spreadsheet. So reporting is everywhere. If I want to track, for example, all my sales that are not invoiced yet, so let's have an overview of my sale orders and well, filter on the ones that are not invoiced, well, immediately over here, you can insert it in an existing spreadsheet. So let's go for the one that we created, for example, and immediately it will adapt a new tab with all the sale orders that are not invoiced. And because it's linked to the real data, it will update itself after that you invoice them or if there are new ones. So in a single spreadsheet, I can have information from different applications. Well, it's easy to create spreadsheets. It's even more easy to use our templates. So let's create a new spreadsheet, for example, um, a quarterly budget, and in a single click, well, I will create a new spreadsheet based upon the data that is existing in the database. I can just adapt, of course, the budget that we provide you with an example, but you can change the budget over here and immediately all the spreadsheet will adapt based upon all the real-time data. Now, financial controllers like to have those kind of reports. It's great to have totals, but they also need to explain differences. That's why now, if you click on any total in a spreadsheet, you can just immediately dive into the records and see all the records that are behind in order to have a real-time overview of the accounting. And that's basically everything that I want to show you today. So thank you very much for listening and let's get back to you, Anthony. All accountants will love it. And speaking of talent, we have a special guest for you. Please welcome Amy Caroline. Thank you, Anthony. Hello to everyone. Wait, 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 wait. Maybe you should do some little exercise before you start your speech. Like... Oh. <laughs> okay, okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Only if you do it with me, Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Okay. Hello, everyone, and welcome once again to this year's Odoo experience. I am delighted to present everything that we have in store for you. You will have access to over 200 talks and workshops. And to go to these talks, you simply have to click on the talk section of the event's webpage, click on the title of the talk that you're interested in, sit back, relax, and enjoy. We have so many Odoo experts that are covering a variety of topics. We have discussions geared to for uh, developers, consultants, users, and so much more. For example, if you're interested in learning more about the user experience, you might be interested in checking out our customer success stories. And if you miss one of the talks you were interested in, no worries, everything is going to be published on our YouTube channel directly after the event, so you can watch all the talks or any of the talks in your own time. That's not all. We also have many interactive events, so if you want to go ahead, jump in and start using, using version 15 right away, you can do so. And we also have more than 50 exhibitors who you can meet by going to the exhibitors section of the events webpage. Now, once again this year, we're going to be giving away some sweet Odoo shoes so you can be the most stylish person around. That's right, at the end of each talk, you will have the chance to participate in some quizzes, earn points, and have the chance to win one of these super sweet shoes. Now, I know that you're wondering, what are the odds? Well, you have a chance to win a pair of shoes every 30 minutes. Actually, eight people have the chance to win shoes every 30 minutes.
Now we also encourage you to share your thoughts, feelings, and opinions, and show off your Odoo knowledge by using hashtag Odoo Experience on Twitter. We would love to hear from you. And you can also go to the community section of the events webpage to create a room or join a room in order to discuss with other Odooers all over the world. It's really one of the best places to learn about the new features that we have designed just for you. So let's get started. What do we have starting today? Well, you'll be able to see what's new in accounting, what's new in social marketing, Odoo's implementation methodology, the customer success story of Pierre Marcolini Group, what's new in the JS framework, que esta pasando on Odoo Mexico, what's going on in Buffalo, create multi-purpose gift cards using Odoo, and the customer success story of Axidy. The next two days, we will have so many engaging and interesting events. I won't make you wait any longer, so go out there and enjoy Odooers. And if I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night.